So we have this person that's 100 meters above the ground with a bungee cord that's 15 meters long when it's slack. Maybe we'll call it uh, the L value. Length of bungee cord is 15 meters long when it's slack. Um, and we know the elastic potential energy for this, or the elastic potential constant or spring constant for this bungee cord is 70 newtons per meter. We know the mass of the person that's going to be jumping off of this bridge. And I want to ask a question. position 20 meters below the bridge what's the person's velocity going to be So let's, let's take stock of what we know here. And I'll do it in another color. What we're saying is that we have a person that's going to be down at this height, a little bit lower than 15 meters, 20 meters down. And if they're 20 meters down, how far are they above the ground? We want to say 80 meters. Okay, so we've got a height of 80 meters. That's important. Now, if they're 20 meters below the bridge, does that let us get a delta x value? You guys see that's yeah, it is five meters. Yeah, so we could say that delta x, oopsie, delta x is equal to l, or the absolute value of l minus 20 meters, each absolute value, and it is 5.00 meters. Well, it's 5.0 meters, but because it's 20.0, oopsie, 5.0 meters. And we could say that E total, Hello. Uh, this is for Scott Ratchiter. Scott Ratchiter isn't here today. Thank you. E total is equal to EG plus EK plus ES. And where are we going to get the, the velocity from? Which of these values? Yeah. Yeah, the EK. Now, we can't zero any of these things out. None of these things are zero. Um, we've kind of gone through the logic behind why they're not zero. So I can get EK all by itself. EK is equal to E total minus EG minus EX. And I want to start subbing in uh, equations that will let me get these guys. Now, E total, maybe I could put in subscripts here, um, but E total initial is the same as saying E total because we're going to say that no energy gets lost here. E total initial is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times the initial height. So I'll call it height initial. Oopsie, I put it in the wrong spot. Oh, no, I didn't. That's E total. Minus EG. Now, we can call it EG final if we like because this is the current position that we're at. And ES final and EK final. It's the final part of the story we're talking about right now at least. EG final is equal to mass times acceleration to gravity times height final. And ES final is one half K times delta X final squared. Now I can start subbing in my values. I've got a mass of 75 kilograms. Acceleration to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Original height was 100 meters. And people that want to help me with the calculations, you can get your calculators out at this point. We already said that the new height is 80 meters. Oops, I forgot to write 9.81. I'm going to run out of space here. Can't fit units in or speak in complete sentences. All right, there we go, more paper. 9.81 meters per second squared. 
minus one half, and the k value in the situation was 70 newtons per meter times delta x, which was, we claimed it was five meters squared. Holy smokes. This is getting to be a long expression. Yes? We do need to keep sig figs in our equation. I was worried I wasn't going to fit it in even with two sheets of paper, though. Yes, you should write all your sig figs as you go. All right, does anybody have an answer? You do? Okay, what would you get? 13,840 joules. Ooh la la. Anybody want to dispute that? You, you agree? Oh, you don't want to dispute it. Okay. Um, so we don't want to round it yet because the question wasn't what's the kinetic energy. The question was what's the velocity. So I'd like to carry on with the next, next line. So if we know that EK is equal to one half M, or EK final is equal to one half M V final squared, we can get our V final all by itself. Two times EK final divided by M all square rooted. Michaela, are you on top of it? <sighs> you monster. 19.2 meters per second. Anybody want to second that motion? Motion carries. Okay, so we know what, the, what this fellow's velocity is at, at the 20 meter mark. Uh, you could be given the, the height that they were above the ground. You could have been told it was 80 meters above the ground. That's the exact same question. You just have to recognize that it's the exact same question. You were told how far they were below the bridge this time. It's the same problem, okay? Um, what about this, though? What if I wanted to figure out how far this, the uh, spring stretches before it bottoms out. In other words, I want to do the exact same problem, but my question is going to be this. Part B, how far above the ground are they? When they stop. I always like that question it introduces another zero. I love zeros. It's a nice round number. So I'm going to fold up my original diagram so I can fit it onto this page without redrawing it. So what I want to say is, forget about the pink drop diagram. I want to know how far above the ground this person is when they come to a stop. And I'm hoping that I don't get a, a negative number, because what would a negative number mean? That they hit the ground. And even if you hit the water from 100 meters up head first, oh, you better know a good chiropractor. Okay. So let's see if we can set this up. E total is equal to EG plus EK plus ES. You know, we can call this the new final if we like. What should I be isolating for here if I want to know how far above the ground this person stopped? Yeah. EG. That's, this is the one that I want. That's the one that I want to get all by itself. Is there anything that zeroes out here when they stop? Yeah. EK. So that guy is gone. That makes this a, a much simpler problem. Now, E total we found once before because it's the same system, it's the same person. So what I'm going to propose is that we get EG all by itself, we sub in our values and see what happens. So EG final, and I know there's some people that are going to beat me to the finish line here, so if you do your calculations before we do, just sit on it, let me know how you, or what you got in a minute. E total final minus elastic force or spring force final, and when I sub in my values, I get, what was the, what was the total energy again? I forget that value. Yeah. What was it? Seven? Seven meters. Yeah. 507 meters? Seven or five. joules? 575 joules. Okay. Minus 
So you may have calculated that already. It was found using the initial gravitational potential energy minus one half k delta x squared. E total final was the same as E total initial, and E total initial was equal to mass times acceleration of gravity times the initial height. That, that was the person's gravitational potential energy at the top of the bridge. Okay. Does anybody know where we could go from here? one and sub it in yeah. so okay. that you have a height there yeah. so you could say okay so that would mean that EGF is mass times acceleration to gravity times height final equals and then something to do with this height final here yeah. so okay so I want to make sure that everybody sees the, the, uh, the thing that people will be upset about at this point I'm going to underline it somehow this delta x value and this height value are connected to each other, right? Because we said once before, and I'm, by the way, I'm not going to hand it to you, but I do want to lay out the groundwork. I'd like people to try this. We said once before that the height you are above the ground could be gotten if you knew how far your, <coughs> your stretch was. Or if you knew how far your stretch was, you get the, ground, the uh, height you are above the ground. So we're stuck at this phase here until we can figure out an equation that can get subbed into this equation. So here's what I want to propose. I want to propose that height above the ground plus delta x plus how many meters? Equals 100 meters. Yeah, plus 15 meters. I've got this really nice equation here that has an h and a delta x in it. And I have another equation here that has an h and a delta x in it. What I'd like to propose is if you're up for it, and only if you're up for it, you've got equation one and equation two. That's two equations with two unknowns, and they're the same two unknowns. If you could get me the delta x value and the h value, you win. Okay? That's the end of the lesson.